Wow, look at that. Can you think of anything more satisfying than seeing tests pass, than seeing green come up when you run your tests? This video is all about that. Our PageKey operating system does not have any testing at this point. This video adds some integration tests using QEMU, so it's a system level test, and PyTest to drive it. My name is Steve with PageKey Tech, where we are taking back tech. Thanks for joining us for another installment of the PageKey Operating System series. Before we get into it, I have a little bit of a change that I wanted to introduce. Basically, it comes down to I need you and your help with some of this stuff. As we try to take back tech, we'll get into more about what that means later. But basically, we have a GitLab group that is open to the public at this point, and all of the repositories that we talk about on this channel are available on that group. So if you go to PKOS and you think of something you want added, please add an issue. Just hit new issue and go ahead and, you know, you'll have to sign in, but you should be able to create issues. You can create merge requests. If you see an issue that you want to work on, just go into the issue, hit create merge request, which should show up when you're logged in and go to town. Get involved. Let's talk about it. Join the Discord. We have a Discord to discuss this type of stuff. And I'm really excited to see if anyone else can contribute to this operating system and any other things that we develop on this channel. So with that, let's talk about this merge request that we have for page key operating system. So let's start with the issue that we have here. It's to add a simple automated test. Basically, I wanted a way to run the tests, run tests on QEMU itself or using QEMU to verify that the things that we're changing show up on the screen and we can automatically check if it's broken in CICD for GitLab. So if you're not familiar with CICD, it's continuous integration, continuous deployment, and it's just automated tests that run every time you push a commit of code. So we have this minute and a half pipeline that ran and the build stage just builds our page key operating system image and then the test stage runs our tests. So we can talk about the approach but what we're building at the end of the day is a few PyTest tests, and we have a QEMU driver, which I implemented as well. It's just an abstraction of what's going on behind the scenes, but basically we're just sending keys using the QEMU monitor, um, which allows us to emulate, you know, pressing the keys on the keyboard so we don't have to do it ourselves. And we can send each command, H-E-L-P, enter, and then we dump the screen, the memory of the screen, and check to make sure that we're seeing what we expected on the screen. It's very crude, very rudimentary, even with some of the refactoring I did to make these tests a little bit less uh, of repeated code, but um, it's a start. It's a first pass at a system level test, and it's better than nothing, I guess. So. so it was a little tough getting this to work. I went with Python because I'm comfortable with Python. I know this has been in C so far, but it was just so much faster for me to use something I'm familiar with. So I went with Python PyTest, the subprocess built-in package in Python. I tried reading directly from the terminal output using subprocess, but that was a little bit messy. Dumping the entire memory to the file worked well. So that was just a matter of going for the start memory address, which is 0x8000B8000, and calculating the end address, which we know each character is represented by two bytes in memory. So we're gonna do two for each character multiplied by the screen width of 80, and then the screen height is 24. So it's an 80 by 24 terminal, right? The old fashioned kind. So that's what we're doing there. So that's how we dumped memory. Now, as far as how do we get QEMU to work with this in CICD, which is challenging because CICD, unlike our computer, which can pop up a window no problem, CICD is headless. So we have to find a way to run without graphics for this. We have to hide away the screen. And it looked like there was a very easy approach to this. Um, this Stack Overflow answer here said we can use no graphic or dash curses to basically get QEMU to not open a window. But the problem that we run into with that is we're also relying on the monitor STDIO flag on QEMU, which allows you to interact with QEMU and use that send keys function to emulate key presses. So both of those are trying to use standard input output as their way of communicating. So if you use both of them, you hit errors. 
if you don't use the no graphic flag, it's not going to work in CI because it's going to say can't open display. It has no display to open. So what do we do? A little bit more Googling. I found out that instead of using standard in and out for QEMU's monitor, you can use a Unix socket as the server for that. So that was another Stack Overflow answer thanks to that person. I'll show it right here. This is the answer that basically explains it. And you can use SOCAT, but in Python, we can also just treat it as a regular socket and connect that way. So our code got a lot cleaner when we did this, and we can look at that in one second. Another approach, the, the ANSI escape characters that you see here, this was related to the messiness that comes with processing the terminal output directly. Because each time you hit a key press, it puts an ANSI escape character into the terminal output. Because if you're looking at a terminal on your screen, when you hit a key, it doesn't just absorb it into the program. It also displays the key that you press on the screen. So it's recording that and it turns into a big jumbled mess. So I just didn't go that route, but I did include some of the code that I wrote to start going down that route. It could have worked, but it just wasn't as clean as dumping the memory and going through it that way. So we can see that we have our passing test in CI, so that's all good. If we get into the merge request, the actual code, and this is what I wanna do in the future, especially if you wanna write some code and you put a merge request out for any of the stuff under page key tech on GitLab, let's do an interview and you can talk about your code. I think it's important that people talk about their code that they write before they merge it and document it in that way. So you can just point back to the video if you need a quick explanation of code. Although so far this isn't quick. <laughs> it's kind of dragging out a bit, I understand that. But we'll get there. Anyway, the changes for this code. Uh, let's start with the Docker stuff. I had to add a, an image and push the image to the container registry for this repository. So you'll see where there's a PCOS image there. I also made a notation in the notation. I, I just made a note in the readme about how to do that. Basically, you just log into the registry, you build it with Docker Compose, you push it with Docker Compose. I love Docker Compose for this reason, because you don't need any special commands. It's all encoded in the Docker Compose YAML file. So all you have to do is build and push. The Docker file, apologies, I had to bulk it up and install Python and pip. And what else? Uh, it installs the pip requirements. Currently, the pip requirements only includes PyTest, and it's only it's specific to running this integration test, so I put it inside of the test folder. What else? GitLabCI.yaml. I really don't like merge request pipelines. I don't understand their purpose. I'm sure they have one, but they just get in the way for me personally. So I disabled it with this workflow rules. If it's a merge request event, do not run that pipeline, otherwise run the pipeline. And then we have two stages, build and test. Both build and test are using our image that we pushed using Docker Compose. And the build stage is just inside of that Docker image running make all, which we know from our scripts directory and previous videos and all that. It's just gonna build pcos.bin and pcos.iso adding it as artifacts and then specifying that the test job needs the build job means that these two files get passed through to the test job, which is perfect because we need to use them to exercise the code in our test. So all that does is run PyTest. So you have two jobs, one builds it, one runs PyTest. And what PyTest does, if you've never used it before, it looks recursively in the directories in your folder. So in test, in source, wherever, for files that start with test underscore and end with dot py because these are pi tests. These are Python tests. So when we run the pytest command, it goes in here, runs test underscore system dot pi. And here we have four tests, one for each of the four commands that we can type into page key operating system. And basically we just send the keys using our custom driver, hit enter, sleep just a bit. It, Explicit sleeps are not great, but they work in this case, and I don't know of any other way to do this right now. We dump the screen to a file, we quit the driver, close out QEMU, and then we can load the screen memory into a convenient format. Uh, there's also a method for that, and then make some assertions on each line of text. So the first lines zero, one, two, and three are just a graphic on page gathering system, right? We just have all those asterisks that are decorative, we start making assertions about the fourth line, which should be our prompt help, which we typed in. So it's pretty cool. We're asserting, hey, we're hitting the keyboard and things are ending up on the screen, first of all. And we're asserting about the output of the command. Now, this is going to get messy because really this should be a unit test 
of the command itself. And I'm thinking maybe we could have a memory manager object that's unit tested and then a screen thing, unit tested and all that stuff. And at the system level with this QEMU stuff, I'm not sure what exactly we would end up doing. So maybe this was pointless, but I enjoyed doing this and I think it's kind of useful. And for anyone else who needs to run QEMU and CICD, you can certainly feel free to go into the test folder and check out this QEMU driver. This took a lot of tweaking to get correct. And it's probably the core of this merge request. So basically what it's doing is uh, creates a socket. When you call start, it deletes the memory dump bin file. Ooh, that's actually, a, I'll fix that. That should be, I don't know, that's questionable. But anyway, it, the big part is it starts process, sub process, popen, QEMU i386, no graphics, so we're headless, monitor, use our Unix socket, and then use pcos.bin as the kernel, which is the artifact that was passed from the previous job, and uh, pipe standard in and standard out. Probably don't need this. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna keep it. So we let it boot up, we connect to the socket, and we're ready to roll. If we tell it to type anything to QEMU, uh, it's just gonna send things to that socket. It's gonna encode it so that it's type of type bytes rather than type string. And if we want to dump screen, all we have to do is calculate the screen size and then use the mem save command in the QEMU monitor and just give it the start of video memory, the screen size that we calculated and the file name we want to dump to. And quitting is just sending the Q command to the QEMU monitor. Parsing the screen memory, how do we do that? So we end up with this bin file that is a dump of the memory. And knowing what we know about text mode video memory, right? We open it up, we read the screen into a bytes object in Python, and then the bytes text is the even bytes within this, right? So screen bytes of i for i in range from zero to the length of screen bytes stride of two is going to give us every even index within that screen bytes array. So we're just grabbing the even bytes and that gives us the text. The color information, which we don't really do anything with in any of our tests currently, is the same thing, but you start on one. So you're getting one, three, five, seven, nine, whereas the text information is zero, two, four, six, eight. And then basically it just decodes the bytes into a string and then it parses it into arrays so that it's an array of strings where each string represents one row of text in the terminal. And then we can make some assertions on that. So that's pretty much all there is to this merge request. And it was a lot of fun to make. And I think hopefully it will improve the health of PageKey operating system, get us some tests in there. You can check out the comments. I'm kind of using the comments as just a, a journal as I go through and I Google things so that I don't lose links, but it's all open for you to check out. And uh, I would love if you also contributed, if you feel like it so check out the issues you can check out this one at this link should stay um, and that's really pretty much it uh, what else so my next step for this I think is to set up a C unit testing framework because these you uh, the integration tests that we just wrote or the system test is incredibly ham-fisted it's very heavy-handed we don't want to be doing that we need we have C code we need to unit test the C code and the granularity that we need in the unit tests is not something that we can put into this big massive integration test. That's for more like high level use cases of, I use the system for this, so let's make sure that if we go through the entire flow, all the data works and nothing breaks. The unit tests that will be created hopefully in this issue will really be the bulk of the testing, in my opinion. So that's probably my next move here. So that's it, fairly low effort video on the editing whatever. I'm just kind of documenting this and putting it out there. And we've taken another step forward with the operating system. So let me know what you think. Comment on the video, join the discord. If you're interested in contributing, that's amazing. Come join me and make your own, you know, change something and let's talk about it. And we'll make a video together about it. I don't know. I'm excited. Let's, let's make it happen. So <laughs> that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Here we go. Moment of truth. Approve. Merge. It's in there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, liking, and joining the PageKey Tech Discord.